Hi, welcome back to Shawnee Hills Workshop. Now in our last video, I mounted the winch on the dump trailer, and at the end of that video, I wasn't able to get the winch to actually work, and I assumed it was probably either bad solenoids in the control box or, you know, loose power cable, something of that nature. Now I mentioned in that video that eventually I was wanting to upgrade the control kit to get rid of the solenoids, but that that wasn't in the budget right now. Well, as I started thinking about it, I thought, you know, I may just be able to replace a solenoid or two, but all these solenoids are getting older, probably going to go bad eventually. And I've just heard such great things about this upgrade kit that I went ahead and spent the money to get it. And here it is. It's part number 99760 if you're interested in this yourself. And in my mind, this is a great upgrade, but I also had another motivating factor. So if you'll remember, I recently put out the video about the Warren 8375 winch that I've got. And my thought was more than likely between those two older controllers, I can get that winch operating as well. And all I'll have to buy is one piece just to get it usable. Uh, eventually I'd still like to upgrade the control kit on it as well, but it can give me two usable winches. And as you can tell, I'm in the wood shop right now. So let's open up the box and I'll show you why I'm in here instead of out at the winch. Now, as you can see, this controller comes with the three wires that hook to the winch the ground wire, as well as a factory provided power cable to go to your battery. If you didn't watch the last video, I'll put a card up in the corner and you'll see that I'm planning on using jumper cables instead of the provided battery cable from the winch. And the jumper cables I'm using specifically have this disconnect built into them. So I need to wire this permanently into the winch. So I'm gonna open up the control box and wherever the battery cable is attached, I'll disconnect it and attach my positive for my jumper cables. So you can see once we open up the uh, cover here, the power line comes in right here to this bolt. So we'll just be able to take that off. Hopefully uh, fit the new one on. I might have to trim down just a little bit to get it to fit on there. And then we should be good to go. Now, while I was doing some research on this winch, I was looking at all the uh, information Warren has out about it. And the one thing they kept saying over and over again is, if you like that tactical look, or if you want a more tactical look, for a more tactical look, and they just kept using the word tactical over and over again for this control box versus the other. And all that kept going through my mind was the movie The Princess Bride when um, Inigo Montoya says to Fazzini, you keep using that word, but I don't think it means what you think it means. <laughs> like, what about this is tactical? What makes it tactical? If they would have said a more streamlined look or sleek look, yeah, it does. It's instead of this you know, bulky box on the side. Now it's this angular box sitting on top. That's one of the things I like about it. Um, I don't have to worry about the tarp on my dump trailer getting caught on the control box because it's just going to slide right over it. But I don't know, the tactical just kept cracking me up. They have a lot crammed into a little space here, which is great because you don't want a big bulky controller. It just uh, makes it a little bit harder to get your fingers down in here and everything. I like this wire loom. I wish I could actually use wire loom on it. Um, I'm not going to be able to, so, uh, you know, I guess it is what it is. Now I'm using a much beefier wire here than what comes with it, but that's because of the distance I'm going to be covering. You know, this has a four foot power cable. I'm going to be going up to 25 feet. And honestly, I wonder if the one gauge is even going to be enough. I uh, thought about trying to get even a lower gauge just because that's a lot of current to travel a long distance. You know, I had, uh, on my last video, uh, there was a commenter that uh, pointed out something that just, he wanted to make sure that I hadn't forgotten or had known about, and I was very appreciative of it. But uh, he sent me a private message, you know, just wanting to make sure that I wasn't offended. And I want to make it clear to everybody out there that if you see something that you think I could do better, do different, or even if you think I did it, but I didn't explain it well, so maybe um, somebody that knows less than I do might watch the video and not realize I did it. Point those kind of things out. You know, um, I'm not a professional teacher. I'm not, I'm not a professional mechanic, welder, anything. You know, I know what, what I know and I'm trying to impart what I can, but if you've got more information, please share it. It's, uh, it's a great help to the community I'm trying to build here. I want this to be a source to where 
if somebody comes to watch this video and they look at the comments, they can walk away with so much knowledge in a short period of time. So please, you know, I don't get offended easy. I might, I might explain that yes, I did that or yes, I knew that or something like that, but I'm not gonna get offended by it. And like I said, I encourage it. Please, you know, help any way you can. What I would hate to happen is somebody have an issue because I forgot to tell them something I did or I didn't think to tell them um, or I wasn't sure if what I was doing was right so I didn't want to tell them. A good example was in the last video I was welding on my dump trailer. Now I have heard before and I still don't have any factual base other than people telling me is that if you're welding on a vehicle you can damage the uh, computer as well as if you're welding on something that is grounded to the vehicle. So if I'm welding on that trailer, the hitch is directly grounded to the uh, vehicle. Now there is paint on the trailer and on the hitch and you know, can should that insulate it? Yeah, but paint can rub off, so it's possible. I don't truly know if all cars have this issue or if it was a short period and they've got safeties in there now that keep that from happening. And, and I don't even know, I don't know anybody personally who's ever damaged a vehicle that way, but I've been told that before. So before I started welding, I unhooked the trailer from my vehicle, the wiring harness and the hitch itself. Well, you know, a uh, commenter mentioned that. And the fact is I was hesitant to mention that in the video because I don't know if it's true or not, but I'm glad that commenter did. And I, you know, I guess my thought is it's better safe than sorry. You know, I, I don't want to be replacing a computer on my vehicle. So, you know, just want to encourage as many comments, you know, help helpful comments. You know, if you're just here to criticize for no reason other than the fun of criticizing, you know, leave the comment if you want, but I don't care. But that's not what I'm asking for. I'm asking for helpful comments. If you see something you know, or you know, something you've been taught differently, please share it. So this is based on my limited understanding of the new upgrade kit, but the way the old controller worked is you basically got solenoids in here and depending on which way you want it to go in or out, different solenoids will fire to shoot the power to you know different sides of the motor. Well, with the controller, the upgrade controller, that all goes to solid state so you got no more solenoids because solenoids, although they were a great technology for the time, they are a little bit troublesome. They'll go out on you. Um, not that hard to replace, not that hard to diagnose, but they do go out. So I'm gonna remove this box here and then we will get ready to mount this on top of the winch. And it looks to be a super easy install. So let's see how long it takes. I wish I could stay here beside you in this moment. Now Warren says to torque these to about 20 foot pounds. Um, so I will get my torque wrench out after this and torque these down. I don't know how many ugga duggas that is, but if somebody knows, you can leave that in the comments. My winch is labeled A, F1, F2. It's actually embossed into the metal, but every Warren I've ever seen is either embossed in or it's color coded to match. So. But for mine, A is on the outside, F1 is at the far back, and F2 in the front. I think that's a common, uh, you know, the way they all are, but I don't know that for sure. So make sure you check the wiring diagram of your specific model. So unfortunately my battery died and I don't know exactly where, but basically I just wired up the winch per the wiring diagram. Get your own wiring diagram based on your model number to make sure you're wiring it up correctly. So. Got the quick connect jumper cables. And for demonstration purposes, I went and pulled my vehicle right here just so it'd be easier to get everything in shot. So you just plug those in and then hook your positive and negative up to your battery. And I'll get ready and start the vehicle and we'll try out the winch. I also want to note that these short sections of the jumper cable, you can buy those separate and you can have them plugged into multiple vehicles ready to go. So you can you know, use them on any vehicle you own. I'm going to get another set and go ahead and plug it into the battery on the dump trailer. So. If I'm at the dump and I'm trying to dump the trailer or going to pick up a tree and the battery's dead, I can run it from my vehicle as well. For the time being, I'm still going to use the remote that was with the old controller. 
I'm wanting to go to the wireless um, controller, which this is compatible with, but it just didn't seem as high enough priority to justify the money right now. So for now, we'll deal with this until I can save up for the remote. Well, I'll tell you what, that makes me happy right there. Now I just got to uh, build a log arch to hook this thing too. Now I've got a question for you. I really like this hammered silver look, but now that I've got the black control box on it, I'm kind of thinking it might look better to paint this black. So let me know what you think in the comments. And Kentucky Flatbed Toyota and Hobbies, thanks again, I really appreciate it. Well, like I always say, if you like these kind of videos, hit that thumbs up button. If you don't like these kind of videos, hit the thumbs down button. Either way, leave me a comment and let me know why. I'm trying to get better and those comments really help. If you're not already a subscriber, I'd love to have you. Click that subscribe button. And if you want to get notified every time I put out a new video, click the bell for notifications. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.